In the mine beneath Tanzania's Merilani Hills, workers are busy hunting one of their rarest treasures on planet Earth. Suddenly, they stumble upon a record-breaking find, two vast gemstones, each bigger than a man's fist, worth a small fortune. It's a discovery that will change lives in this impoverished community. As the owner of a small mining operation, Sunny New Laser spends his day hoping for a great discovery. In fact, so do many people who inhabit this region in northern Tanzania. The only place where a valuable gemstone can be found and with the help of more than 200 people, perhaps Laser has a chance of striking a big. Near the slopes of the highest mountain in Africa, both subsistence miners and large corporations cover the depths of the earth for deposits of this rare resource. But in June 2020, a team headed by Laser, who is also a local cattle farmer, hit the jackpot. Now. He hopes to use the windfall to transform his community. What Laser and his team had discovered was Tanzanite, a rare blue-purple gemstone named after the country in which it's found. Furthermore, the gemstones discovered were the largest examples of the mineral ever to be recorded, worth a fortune by any standard. Their value could provide a vital boost to a country where some 35% of people are living in poverty. Today, Tanzanite stands alongside Sapphire and Aquamarine as one of the most popular blue gems in the world. But unlike most of the precious stones that we know and value today, this eye-catching mineral has a relatively short history. In fact, it wasn't until the 1960s that jewelers began to realize its potential. Technically speaking, Tanzanite is actually a type of soazet, which can range in color from clear to shades of yellow and pink. But when experts realized that they could create a crystalline blue-purple gem by heating the mineral, a new precious stone was born. And in 1967, the jewelers Tiffany and Company prepared to launch it onto the market. Because Tanzanite was unknown at the time, Tiffany needed to educate both the public and jewelers about the new discovery, but ultimately the gamble paid off. And more than 50 years later, it's considered one of the most desirable gemstones in the world loved by celebrities and royalty alike. Now, one of the most attractive things about Tanzanite is that it's trichroic, meaning that its color changes when viewed from different angles. So in some positions the stone appears blue, but while rotating it can create a violet or yellow hue. Additionally, the shade of the gem also shifts depending on the lighting conditions. Just like the majority of rubies and sapphires, most tanzanites are heated in a laboratory to improve their dazzling color. However, the most valuable gems are those that have achieved the same result through natural processes. For the finest stones, Sellers can expect to fetch as much as $750 per carat on the market. Although Zoezit can be found around the world, the blue variant, as its name suggests, is mined exclusively in Tanzania. Specifically, it comes from an area in the north of the country just 8 square miles in size. Known as the Merilani Hills, this spot is located in the shadow of Mount Kilimanjaro in the country's Manyarwa region. Today, the export of Tanzanite makes up a significant part of the country's economy, 
However, the minerals path from underground to marketplace has never been straightforward in the early days after its discovery. When Tanzania was still a socialist nation, the mines were owned and operated by the state, but when the political landscape changed, so too did the trade in this precious stone. Yes, after the fall of socialism in Tanzania, the government split the Tanzanite mining area into four sections. And while two of these blocks were given to large companies, another two were allocated to locals operating on a smaller scale. However, it wasn't long before this arrangement gave rise to conflicts in the Merilani Hills. You see, in 2004, a company known as Tanzanite One took over mining operations on one of the blocks of land largely staffed by workers from South Africa. The enterprise was seen by many as a drain on local resources, diverting profits from the Maniara community. Furthermore, their advertising heavily implied that only their gemstones, not those sourced by small-scale outfits, were authentic. As well as tough competition from large corporations, Tanzania's smaller subsistence miners also have to compete with illegal activities. In fact, prior to 2018, experts believed that as much as 40% of the region's gemstones were being smuggled out. In an effort to combat these losses, a wall was constructed around this site in the Merilani Hills. According to reports, the wall seems to have worked, because in 2018 the Tanzanian government stated that the mining sector was on the rise and profits began to improve. Around the same time, the country's laws were just to ensure that at least some of the money made from extracting Tanzanite would benefit the local community. Currently, mining companies not based in Tanzania are required to hand over 16% of their profits to the local government. But even with these measures, life is often difficult for the subsistence miners working in the Merilani Hills. And while some of them do utilize modern technology, others venture into deep holes, equipped with little more than a ladder and some rope. For these small-scale miners, insufficient equipment can be just one of many difficulties associated with this work. According to reports, conditions are often challenging. And the job requires spending long hours underground to top it all off. Some may come home with nothing to show for their labor at the end of a long day. Apparently, this is because many of Tanzanians' small-scale mining operations take place on a profit-share basis, so if the group gets lucky, each worker will get to take home a portion of the spoils. But if no Tanzanite is found, no wages can be paid, sometimes for a month or more. To counteract this, many miners in the region have second jobs. According to records, there are approximately 700 different operations active in the area that are for small-scale outfits, and each of these requires a primary mining license, or PML, a permit issued only to Tanzanian citizens. In this way, the government has had some success at ensuring that at least some of the country's wealth is kept within the local population. While some of these operations are profit-share enterprises operating with minimal equipment, others more closely resemble the large corporations that mine elsewhere in the Merilani Hills. Take Laser's outfit, for example. Having initially grown somewhere thanks to successful farming and cattle business, he decided to branch out into the Tanzanite industry. Although some news outlets have rightly called Leiser a subsistence farmer, he is also the head of a fairly sophisticated operation that employs around 200 people. 
In a June 2020 interview with The Guardian, one of his managers, Kiria Laser, explained he has logistic experts, engineers, geologists, who help him in the planning of the operations. He doesn't himself go to the pit to dig. It's a really challenging experience, explained Kiria of the mining itself. It's tough, of course working in this dusty area. We inhale a lot of dust and get sick, but we haven't lost the determination to work. Such were the conditions in June 2020, when the hard labor of lasers miners paid off in spades. For you see, that month a team was excavating underground when it made an astonishing discovery. Indeed, the workers found two records breaking tanzanites of remarkable size. According to reports, both measure almost 12 inches across and are around 4 inches thick. Moreover, each is vibrant blue-violet in color. Before this latest discovery, the largest known tanzanite stone was a specimen that was discovered in 2005 measuring some 8.6 inches long by 3.15 inches across. It weighed in at more than 6 pounds. However, this record was smashed by lasers gems, which have a combined total weight of almost 32 pounds. Then, just days after the discovery, on June 24th, the Tanzanian government stepped in to purchase the stones. Apparently, President John Magufuli himself ordered the move, wishing to keep the record-breaking rocks in the country moving forwards. He plans to have them displayed in a museum in Dar es Salaam, the former capital city. This is a confirmation that Tanzania is rich, Magufuli explained in a statement. And it's not the only thing that is, according to reports, Laser's company received a staggering 7.74 billion Tanzanian shillings in return for the gems. The equivalent of around $3.35 million. In a country where the average salary is around $19,000, it's a life-changing amount. According to Laser, 10% of his earnings from the sale of the gems will be split between the workers. A sum of around $1,670 per person. Much of the excitement has died down, however, there is hope that some of Laser's windfall might be used to achieve lasting change. In fact, the entrepreneur plans to invest in improving facilities in Simanjero the Maniara district which he calls home, speaking to the BBC. He outlined his ambitions for the future. I want to build a shopping mall and a school, Laser explained. I want to build this school near my home. There are many poor people around here who can't afford to take their children to school. Although the mining boss did not receive a formal education himself, he hopes that his children can learn how to run his business. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.